Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you for joining us today. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is always our honor and our pleasure to come and spend some time with you in the Word of God. And before we go any further, don't forget to tune in every Friday at 10 o'clock a.m., Four, is there a word from the Lord with Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. and Pastor Valerie Wilson of Charity Lighthouse of Faith? That's right. New broadcast. They aired the second broadcast on this past Friday. But you can tune in every single Friday, 10 a.m. Is there a word from the Lord with Apostle Naaman Wilson Jr. and Pastor Valerie Wilson of Charity Lighthouse of Faith? All right. We are going to step into our conclusion of dream interpretations today. And we have some things in the work, uh, in the works for this particular series. Um, I'm not sure when, but we are going to release the teaching in book format on dream interpretations. Uh, so excited about this particular series. And so we are going to uh, put together, we've already started the process of doing a work on dream interpretations. Uh, we're going to cover what we have shared with you in this series, along with some additional dreams and visions that we have encountered Uh, within the book so some things that we have never shared publicly and so we have to take our time to strategically ask the Holy Spirit which dreams and visions we can put into this book compilation all right today we're going to take a look over in the book of revelations we're going to take a look at John and what he was allowed to see this is in time dreams vision and it's so important that we get an understanding that when God wants to show us something when he wants us willing vessels to begin to pray about a certain thing he will release it in the formation of a dream or a vision. This is also known as your assignment. Whenever God wants to talk to an individual, all depends on what he wants to share with that individual, depends upon, it depends upon their spiritual maturity. So your dreams and your visions are based off of your spiritual maturity. What has been released unto you in that dream and in that vision is now your assignment. It is something that God wants to reveal unto you, but we must not lean unto our own understanding. We must acknowledge him in all of our ways so that he can direct our paths. This particular path is in dream in visions dreams and in visions i want to make that precisely clear the path that we have been discussing is dreams and visions and the interpretations thereof and so when he god shares that with us he will then also provide an interpretation for what he released unto the individual So take a look at Revelations, the fourth chapter. There is a lot going on here. Also, I want to grab something so significant when it talks about the time of worship, which is an experience that Isaiah had. So I want to compare... Or shall I say, I would like to um, allow these particular things to shadow one another. 
Isaiah experienced a time where he said he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And that's over in Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Isaiah 6 shares with us in the year that King Uzziah died I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphims each one had six wings with one He covered his face, and with twan he covered his feet, and with twan he did fly. And one cried unto another, and he said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And so Isaiah experienced a vision of the throne, the Lord sitting high, and the angels round about saying, Holy, holy, holy. Over in Revelations, the fourth chapter, John had a vision. He was allowed to see heavenly worship as well. And it reads as follows. After this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I, which I heard was as if it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show you these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings round about and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night saying here it is again holy 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 lord god almighty which was and is and is to come and when these beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying thou art worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure there they are and were created so here are two instances we have isaiah which is a prophet in the old testament his experience of being allowed to see heavenly worship and we have john allowed to see heavenly worship now we do know that the first book in the first portion shall I say of Revelation it discusses the letters to the churches but now we are transitioning into another portion of what John was allowed to see 
in the case of Isaiah, this was a part of his commissioning. And so when we look back again at Isaiah 6, and he is allowed to see the heavenly worship, and I'm going to read Isaiah 6 and 4. It says, And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew, then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched my lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and I and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. And so that was a part of Isaiah's commissioning for what he was supposed to do during his time period. John, in his experience, allowed to see some things which were currently going on and which were to happen in the future. Once again, what you see in your dreams and in your visions, especially when it is connected to prayer, worship, things of that nature, do what you see in the dream. If you see yourself once again reading the word, Ask what word you are reading and read that word. I do recall on an occasion, and it was, it's been about a year ago, I saw in a dream different ministerial offices in their individual robes, kneeling and in prayer. I saw the robe of the apostle bishops I saw the prophets the pastors the teachers the evangelists I saw them robed and they were dressed I saw I remember seeing a white robe a black robe and a white robe and they were kneeling and in prayer that is one of those dreams where because I saw them kneeling in prayer, I began to intercede for the ministerial offices that I saw. And I did that until it was released from me. There are times where, yes, I am led to pray. I pray for the fivefold, but then there are some times where it is done at a heightened level and it's not necessarily for those that I know because we are all a part of the body of Christ and there is no division in the body of Christ and so I don't need to know a certain apostle personally or hear about their name to intercede I do what I see in the dream or the vision so John is, is, is allowed to see such beautiful heavenly worship. Can you imagine being allowed to see heavenly worship so that you can share what it is going to be like during that time in heaven? Scripture says on earth as it is in heaven. But unless God reveals to us what's going on in heaven, how will we really know? And so John was allowed to see what was going on in heaven so that he can share it with you and I. What an experience. What a testimony. 
verse 5 says, And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and they were and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now we have already established the acknowledgement of what the seven spirits of God are. And that is found over in Isaiah 11 and 2. So let's read that. The spirit of the Lord is number one. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Those are the seven spirits of God. They are present during this heavenly worship. That's wonderful. Over in the fifth chapter, Looking at the book and the Lamb, it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, hath prevailed to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. So see, there is a lot going on in this vision. He was allowed to see the seven letters to the churches. He was allowed to see the heavenly worship. Now the book with the seven seals. He was allowed to see the hundred and the, the, the twenty and four, the twenty four elders. He was allowed to see their attire. All of this great detail found in this vision. There was a point of time, and I encourage you to read the book of Revelation, there was a point of time when uh, it got to one of the seals that he was told not to write that portion. So you see, I can't express enough how important it is when you have a dream, when you have a vision, to write it out. And to really ask, what do these things mean? Because they do have a profound meaning. I want to share something with you connected to dreams and visions. When I say that the dream that you have and the vision that you have becomes your assignment and it's an accessory prayer it goes back to scripture texts where we are give, given the keys to the kingdom of heaven okay so on Sunday evening I'm sitting in a service and the word bind was mentioned and we talk about that. I have given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. We talk about that, right? Well, I'm sitting in service and the words bind really struck in my spirit. So I want to go over to the scripture text for you. Because I want to line this up and this is connected to your dreams and visions. So over in Matthew, the 16th chapter, 
and the night beginning at the 19th it says and i will give unto you unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven okay so i'm sitting in a service and i hear the words bind and then the next thing that i heard was bind means to stop bind means to stop you have the keys of the kingdom of heaven to bind on earth you have the authority to stop what you have dominion over on the earth okay so let's tie this in when i say that you dream according to your spiritual maturity when you are led in a dream and it's connected to intercessory prayer uh, someone could be hurt someone could be going through uh, sickness whatever it is that you dream about you have been given authority by God to bind that thing on earth as it is in heaven you have been given the authority to intercede intercede means to intercept bind means to stop that's why it's important to pay attention to our dreams and visions because whatsoever God is saying to you in that dream we do what we see in the dream if it is in prayer if it's in interceding ask God to release through the Holy Spirit guide us in prayer what you see going on in the dream if it is binding sickness you do what you saw in the dream you have been given the authority I'm gonna read it again and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven bind means to stop it means to stop you also have the authority and power to loose from heaven as it is on earth and so if you are dreaming about worship if you are in a place and there is a worship service you have the power and the authority to release that worship on earth why because you have been given the keys to the kingdom of heaven the keys to the kingdom of heaven represent your spiritual authority what you have dominion over and so your dreams are connected to what you have dominion over let's go back to the dream we, we, we've gone back to this dream several times I want to go back to it again the dream about the individual laying down he had a baby stroller and someone was looking to take that baby stroller by any means necessary and in this dream the Holy Spirit allowed me to observe their thoughts he allowed me to know their thoughts their plot and scheme was to kill for this baby stroller now the baby stroller represents the individual who's laying down it represents their future in this dream remember I shared with you that I when I perceived the 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 uh, the culprits thoughts to kill for this baby stroller I removed the baby stroller I removed it and put it in another place that is interceding that is intercepting the plot and plan of the culprit what God is saying unto me he has given unto me the keys to the kingdom of heaven to bind on earth as it is in heaven that is my authority here on earth to stop 
to intercede, to intercept. Prime example. Let me share this dream with you, and I've never shared this dream publicly. And it's been a couple of years ago. I had a dream that I was at a house. I was at this house. My mom was in the house. And outside were all of these black cats. Black cats everywhere. And they were trying to get in. They were trying to get in the door. And I went to step outside the door and I told my mom to hurry up and close the door. And one particular black cat attached itself to the base of the door. I'm talking stretched itself across the base of the door, claw in feet across the bottom, trying to get in. And I had to pry this cat from the door. And I told my mom, keep the door closed. For years, every now and then, I go back to that dream, yet asking the Holy Spirit, who is trying, who is attached to me, who is trying to gain an unlawful entrance into my house, unto um, my spiritual house, my, and my mom was in the house. Who is it? And so I check my connections. I am cautious about who I am connected with. And I pray about who I'm supposed to connect with. If I come encounter, you know, if I encounter someone new, I begin to ask the Holy Spirit, is there a connection there? If there is not, to cut it. Cut the relationship. If the intentions are not God intentions, I, I do that. But that dream, I've never shared. I shared it with one individual privately. And that was a couple of years ago that I had that dream. And so I often, the Holy Spirit brings that dream back to my remembrance. And when he brings that dream back to my remembrance, I pray and ask in my current relationships, reveal any individual, any attached spirit that is trying to infiltrate and attach itself to gain an unlawful entrance to my dwelling. Our dreams matter. And our dreams mean something. So don't discount them. John was allowed to see according to his spiritual maturity. He was in a spiritual place where he could handle this type of vision. We begin to share with you previously also about Peter and Cornelius over in Acts 10 because Peter although he put up some hesitation about sharing the faith with uh, 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 I want to say another nationality he was at a spiritual level of obedience and so when Cornelius had the vision he was given a name of who would instruct him on what further to do Peter was at a level of spiritual maturity 
where he could be obedient unto God. Remember his restoration with Christ was when Christ asked him three times, Peter, lovest thou me? And when Peter said yes, he said, feed my sheep. So in the instance where God allowed him to see the vision, the first instance of his level of maturity is when it was revealed unto him about Sapphiriah and Ananias. He handled that with care. And he executed as he was instructed to do. He was instructed to reveal to the two individuals that God saw what you did. When he fulfilled that particular assignment of what he saw in the dream and the vision, his spiritual maturity in Christ, in God, allowed him another experience. So I say to you today, what you do with your dreams and visions matter. Handle them with care. When you begin to ask for clarity for the dream and vision, when you begin to do what you saw being done in the dream or vision, when you follow the instructions given unto you, connected to that dream and vision, then God can release more unto you. But when we have the dreams and visions and we don't ask an understanding of them, and when we don't ask the understanding, then uh, we're, we're not showing up for assignments. So we have to show up for the assignment connected to the dream or the vision because that is what it is. When Daniel had dreams and visions and he didn't understand. Remember he wrote the dream and vision down. And then he asked what those things meant. When he asked what those things meant. Gabriel the angel was sent unto him to give him skill and understanding. And it put him in a place of prayer of intercession. Daniel said, and let me let me go back here because Daniel said he was one that understood the word of another prophet. He understood it. And by him understanding, he went into a place of intercessory prayer. So let's get over to that. Over in Daniel, the ninth chapter, it says in the first year of Darius, the son of Acharias, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish seventy years in the desolations of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. Now he began to pray and he began to fast. He interceded. And when he did that, he got an interpretation of that. We have to do the same thing. 
when something is released unto us it becomes our obligation to pray for an understanding and interpretation and once we get the prayer and the interpretation we'll get further instructions on what to do So don't let your dreams and your visions just lay dormant. Write them out. Pray. You may not get the interpretation right then. Or you might get it in partiality as with John. He saw things in portion. And the things that troubled him he asked, what do these things mean? Another dream I'd like to share with you. I was at a counter. It looked like I was getting ready to... And this right here is connected to spiritual warfare. Looked like I was getting ready to check in, and and there was standing next to me uh, an old co-worker, and we were at this counter, and the person behind the counter, it was a female, and it had an appearance of a skeletorial face, and this person behind the counter struck out to hit me. In the dream, I hit back. Now, the person in the dream struck out to hit me but missed. But I hit back and hit the one who struck out at me. And so when I woke up, I'm like, oh, my God. To me, that, that is spiritual warfare. And I began to ask the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me against spiritual attacks that was coming up against me. That is striking out to hit me. And I began to ask to reveal the different attacks. But one thing I can tell you is they struck out to hit me and miss. But when I struck out to hit back, I didn't miss. My, my my punch landed I hit back and so when the enemy comes in like a flood God will lift the spirit will lift up a standard whenever the enemy comes up against you that standard is spiritual warfare the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds And so, keep your eyes and ears open. Why are we going through what we're going through? God wants to warn us. That was also a dream of warning. To letting me know. That the enemy was getting ready to hit against me. And that I must hit back. One and another thing that was revealed. The enemy missed. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Remember I said that this skeletal female went to strike it at me. Swung, but missed. But I hit back and my punch landed. My punch, my fighting is in the word of God. It is my obedience and my faithfulness to reach for the word of God, to exercise the keys to the kingdom of heaven that have been given unto me. Which is the word of God, to stand on the word of God, the very promises of God. Take those dreams. What do they mean? That particular dream really struck out at me because of what was going on in the dream. 
Why are you hitting at me? Why are you striking at me? Let me share another dream with you. I was sitting in the second portion of my bookstore that I had in Tampa. I was sitting in the lounge area on the couch and I had been reading my Bible and I went to lay my head back and I had my eyes closed. I was not asleep. And when I closed my eyes and laid my head back, I saw what I had to actually look up and I heard the Holy Spirit because I had to ask the Holy Spirit, what was that? I saw a gargoyle looking down at me, peering down at me, looking down. And I said, what is that? I had, like I said, I was sitting on the couch. I had just gotten finished reading the word and I closed my eyes. I laid my head back and I saw this figure looking down at me and I jumped up really quick and opened my eyes and I said what was that Holy Spirit was that and I heard the word gargoyle now that's not a word that I use in my everyday vocabulary so I looked it up and surely what I saw in that vision was what I saw when I looked it up and I remember my then pastor going to him and telling him that experience of what I had saw in that vision and he said to me that is but you saw that because that is you have stepped over into the enemy's camp and he's watching you you have stepped over into his territory and he's watching you and so I began to pray. And I thank God for the warning of, of, of sharing with me and leading and guiding me. Teaching me what to do with dreams and visions. How to ha handle them. Some dreams and visions, yes, they will literally scare you. And they will leave you perplexed and they will leave you in a place of questioning of what was that about always go to God ask him to reveal what it is that he allowed you to see because he wanted you to see it That was uh, one of a, a very, very major experience I had in a open vision because I wasn't asleep. I, I clearly just, the minute I finished reading that word and laid my head back to meditate on that word and I had my eyes closed, I saw something looking down at me. And I said, what is that? Lord, what is that? And he revealed what that was. And because I didn't know what a gargoyle was, I had to look it up. And what I saw online as far as the picture was the exact same thing. He allowed me to, what I saw when I closed my eyes. So there are going to be times that, yes, he will even reveal unto you the spiritual, demon, the, the demonic spirits that are watching you. Yes, he will allow you to see the demonic spirits that are watching you. I pray that what we've shared with you in this series has been food unto your soul. We will release 
when we will share more of dream interpretations through a publication. Have a blessed day, everyone.